Hello, 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 hello. I have just so many words in the dictionary and all I could do is say hello, hello. Close your eyes, I'm gonna move the camera around. I think we're actually pretty good there. Can I, can I zoom in at all? Oh, look at that. Alrighty. Welcome, welcome everyone. For those on the replay, it's 10 minutes till. If you've been here before, you know that I just like to come in early because I don't like to wait till the last minute. I'm always afraid some disaster will happen. We are, we are just doing nothing today. We're just gonna have some fun. Oh look, I just got a notification that I just went live. Huh, and maybe I'm subscribed to myself. I didn't know I did that. All right, so we have some room here to play. Let's do this. I've been sewing on my Juki. I keep switching back and forth, which is kind of dangerous because while both, both machines are very similar, they have little different things like this one, where is the, the feed dogs, uh, the lift the rate, bleh. to raise the foot is in the inside here and on the Juki it's on the back. And the foot pedal is different. I guess that's about it. There's not that many differences. There are different things that each machine does, which is why I switch back and forth. But since we are playing with fabric postcards, I like to use the brother for that. Warm myself up a little bit with one today. Hey, that works, Anna. I, some days, you know, it's nice just to have a pre-printed panel to let someone else tell me what to do what color to use, what thread to use. I just don't always want to think. Sometimes it's nice just to have someone tell me what to do. Hi, Sharon from Australia. Hello, everyone that was already in here and I didn't see your names. I know I saw Donna S. Joe from Belgium. Linda's in Arizona. No, Linda's in Texas, Anna's in Arizona. You can look at one word and say something else. Jackie's here. Sharon and Cheryl. Cheryl, that sounds like fun. I'll say it now and I'm going to say it again later though. I have zero creativity. I woke up with zero creativity today. I have not one ounce of inspiration in my body whatsoever. Cheryl's from Arizona too. There's a few Arizonas we have today. But this is a good day for this project because when I wake up, sorry about my squeaky chair. When I wake up with zero creativity, this is what I do. I play with fabric postcards. Hello, Robin from Maryland. So it's a good thing to talk about. I have, I have zero creativity. I have zero communication skills in my brain today. It's one of those days where you just want to stay in bed and pull the covers over your head, put on like nonsense TV or like a Harry Potter marathon that you've watched 50 times over and over or whatever your favorite movie happens to be. That was the only one I could think of and do nothing all day. Jackie, you have the hardest time with sound. So I sewed this just before we got started, hoping that would kind of loosen me up a little bit and get me going. No, not at all. But these things happen. I mean, we lose our creativity all the time. What time is it? Oh, almost three. I hear all the vehicles outside. It's getting busy out on the road. From like three to six, the main semi-highway road outside my house is always really busy. everyone has been having a good week so far. I've been pretty productive on the packing and purging. I found out last night that I, that I should say I know because all the kids, all three kids left the house. Rob passed away. So I inherited everything 
that those people didn't want that they left behind. So I was cleaning out the pen drawer and the desk in the living room and that's where the kids would go when they needed anything for school or whatever. And um, there was a lot in there. I'm gonna have to make a donation to like a daycare or a church or something like that because I have so many crayons and color pencils and markers and the markers, Robbie's 24 this year, so he hasn't been in school in six years. And these are from like middle school when they needed things like markers and stuff. And they're still perfectly good. They're, they're nice and fresh. And I think it's because I kept them, they're capped in, in a dark drawer where the sun and the heat doesn't get to them, I guess. I don't know. So I, there was a lot. I saved just one of those little plastic school pencil boxes and that's it. But I was laughing with my daughter. I said, because that doesn't even count the pens and pencils that I have in this room. These are currently my, my current supply. Oh, you can see them anyways in the picture. So those are my current supplies of pens. And then I have those metal buckets from the Dollar Tree that I hang up on a curtain rod. So I have one, two, three, four, five buckets with pens and pencils in it. That's a lot. They are, Jackie. I actually recycled a whole bunch of graph paper too, which is really good for designing blocks. The only problem is, is I, I don't design, I tried designing that way and I just, I, I can't even follow my own patterns. I just end up making things up as I go along. I have my traditional black cherry ginger ale. It is my reward for sitting here on the live stream. Not that I need a reward, but I need an excuse to drink a soda every two weeks or every other week. And this, this is my excuse. I, I say like, I need the sugar to keep me going during the live stream. So that's what I have in this cup. Whoa, sorry guys. I'm a little off today. And because everyone always talks about what they're drinking. And in this cup, I am drinking those flavored water packets. I buy from Walmart. They have um, mixed berry with electrolytes. I use two packets in a two quart. I call it a Kool-Aid container because that's what we always kept in them. So I fill a two quart container, a plastic container with water, put two packets in, and then I just fill my cup as I go. Lucy, you're very well organized. I usually have a scrap piece of paper that I'm figuring out numbers on. I was looking at a notepad on my refrigerator the last few days and it says three down and four across. Obviously, I was writing something down for myself crafting wise. I have no idea what three down and four across means, but I wrote it down and it's saved on the refrigerator so I don't forget it. The problem is, as you can see, I don't know what I was doing. I mean, obviously, I probably finished that project. I must have wrote it down like when I was going out to get lunch or something and I didn't want to forget it. So I wrote it down on the refrigerator real quick. Lucy's here from England. Hello, Lucy, Lucy. You have several notebooks. I was looking around. I have several notebooks. I have a lot of notebooks where I've written in two pages and then the rest of them are blank. Since I started using the planner, I've noticed I'm more organized. I don't have to leave a note. When I leave this room at night, excuse me, I don't have to leave a note stating what I need to start on the next day because when I think of something today when I close this room up at five o'clock or whatever I usually leave myself a note in the morning this is what you want to do but since I started using that planner I don't have to leave myself a note anymore and it's funny because I don't leave a note in the planner either I just must be I must have found a schedule or a routine for myself that works and that I don't have to leave myself notes at the moment because I'm sure that's going to happen again where I'm going to need notes You should see some of the boxes that I've been packing because I'm, I'm really afraid that I'm gonna pack something up and I'm gonna need it later. So as I'm packing things, I'm like making an itinerary list with a magic marker right on the outside of the box. So there's almost everything that's in that box I write down. 
things that I might need at a future date. So I don't want to have to go through and dig through everything. Ginger ale and berry, yeah, that is, it works for me, especially now. If I want cool and refreshing, I go for the flavored water. And, and if I want something sugary, because, you know, the dentist and the doctor always ask, are you drinking soda? And I actually, I don't drink soda. I keep ginger ale in the house because I have a sensitive stomach and the ginger ale helps. So any excuse when I'm feeling good to drink it, I'm going to take it. And that's this. And when I start moving, I'm sure, especially if I go from here into the kid's house before we make the big move, I want to make sure that things I know I'm not going to need or things I might think I'm going to need, I need to put notes on it. I've already been looking and I have a whole bunch of, oh, welcome, welcome to anyone who's come in since we've been chatting. I have, I've set aside and I didn't pack some some like kits. I was given a couple of crafting kits and I was given some sewing kits where they're like little mini quilts. So it has all of the fabric and the pattern in it. So I set those aside. So when it gets to the point where everything's packed up and we're just waiting to move, if I don't have a bunch of videos ready for you guys, we might just do some random live streams and I'll keep this sewing machine, the little brother, just some basic thread that, and we'll just work on something that's in that kit. Donna, the kids and I, I'm going to say it out loud. Universe, please say you love me. We are going to be moving to Arizona sometime this year or early next year. It all depends. It's still a little early in the year to know what they're doing. But apparently, certain areas of Arizona are really identical here to Cape Coral. Cape Coral's a few years ahead because we've already had our big boom. We've built a lot of different places. I joined their Facebook group for the area we're going to in Arizona. And they're like, oh, we're so excited because then all these coming to this town and we're waiting for a Whole Foods and Trader Joe's is coming. And I'm like, wow, they're about five years behind us because we've already gotten all those things. Lucy, my daughter's being transferred. She works for, hold on, I'll get it. Mission Barbecue. Mission Barbecue is really big, especially in Florida and all the way up the East Coast. So now they're expanding out to the West Coast. So they need some um, store managers, general managers there. And she's like, I'll go. Because <laughs> she knows we've all had about enough of Florida. Where even though Arizona is going to be similar, it's still going to be super different. Arizona doesn't have daylight saving times. Florida doesn't have a state tax. Arizona does. Arizona is actually north of Florida, so they get two seasons. They actually get winter, and we get summer, and summer, and summer, and summer, and summer. You don't have the humidity? That is excellent. I, You guys have a lot of, like, I saw in the, the Surprise and Wendell. Is that proper? Is that nearby? It's, it's one of those two areas that we're going to go to. We've heard that both of them are pretty good, and that... Um, there's a lot of housing communities being built there. We have most of ours already built. We have more coming in all the time, but we're really well built here. Yeah, I'm sure it's going to be hotter, but it's already hitting 115 here. So it's just going to be a different hot there. And I know it gets hotter than 115 sometimes, but I mean, we're already sweltering here and liver sweltering here and living in the AC. I think it's a good payoff when you know in six months you're going to actually get like 50 degrees. Right now it's 86 degrees here. The humidity is outrageous. I'm sweltering and it's February. We're not supposed to get this hot until April or May. That's all I'm worried about, Lucy, the last summer here. Because the way it's looking, we will be here through hurricane season. And, uh... I don't want to deal with that. None of us want to deal with another hurricane season. The, yeah, rain. We love rain. Yeah, I don't miss the hurricanes. I won't miss the hurricanes at all. And Miranda and my daughter loves to like go hiking and stuff. So we know there's a lot of hiking there and there's just a variety of things. Plus, when you live this far south in Florida, it takes us nine hours to get to the border. So you can't plan a day trip. You're like, oh, let's go to the Carolinas or let's go to another state. 
you need, you know, to make a stop and sleep overnight, get a hotel or whatever, and then go to the next state. Where in Arizona, you can just travel a little this way. You go North Arizona, I hear there's snow. Maybe you want to go over to this state and that state. You know, you can't do that here. When you're in Florida this far down, you're in Florida. I mean, as it is, you have to leave really in the middle of the night if you want to even just go to Disney or something. You can get the, the family pack, a Disney pack for being a Florida resident and save. You pay once for the entire year and you can go whenever you want. But it's such a long ride that you just can't go whenever you want. You have to like have extra days where people who live around Disney, they can just go to Disney and have lunch and hang out for a couple hours and then go home. Yeah, it, it's when you get down past Tampa, the halfway mark, I always call Tampa the halfway mark. I don't know, you know, mileage wise that if it is or not, but like, okay, this weekend, there's this really big cold front that's coming through Northern Florida and it's going to stall out at Tampa and we're not going to see anything. We won't get the rain. We won't get the cool weather. It's like, there's a shelf there, which, which is fine. You have monsoons, but don't you have, we were talking to a couple people, don't you have like those, those things like in Greece, those big cement, like canals where the water can run through and stuff? Because when it rains on a regular summer afternoon here, I get probably three or four inches of standing water in my entire backyard. I call it flooded, but you know, when you walk through it, it's up to your ankles. So when we get rain, the road, I, I've shown you guys before where the road is coming halfway up the driveway. You can't see the road anywhere. I can't leave my house. And that's just a normal rain shower in the afternoon. But that's okay. You know, it's just, I've been in Florida since I was 13. I've been here, you know, for 40 years. Wow, 41 years. That's a long time. There's so many more people coming in. There's just, I don't do, I hear there's a lot of creative things out in Arizona too, like different quilters and then, you know, different type of, you know, craft stores and stuff like that. I'm hoping to find some like bead shops because we don't have bead shops here. We don't have yarn shops. You get, it's like you're only allowed one quilt shop per county or something like that. Oh, that's good, Lucy, because some of those floods, like the ones, where were they? Was it Texas that just had those floods not that long ago? No, California. That was bad. Aqueduct or something like that. I was, when I was in the Facebook group yesterday, there's some new housing developments. And apparently the way it is right now, because of the, all the new pipes and things aren't quite connected all the way, when they get a lot of rain, they have to let their water in their house run for a couple minutes because brown dirt comes out of it. I'm like, oh my, that's nice to hear. That's just what I wanted to hear. Hi, Mona. All right, everyone, thank you so much for hanging out with me. I mentioned this a couple minutes ago, but I woke up this morning with zero creativity. I have no crafting mojo, no sewing mojo whatsoever which works out pretty good. So I thought I would show you guys what I do when I have the blahs. I worked on this Aqua E fabric postcard just to warm up a little bit today. I really just dragging my feet on it, but I want to put a listing in the Etsy shop. If someone wants to join like a um, fabric postcard of the month, like every month you'll receive a fast fabric postcard. So I've been trying to work on all the rainbow colors to have enough of them to show in the listing. So I think I have all of the colors I have now, and then I want to get the listing put up soon. While waiting for you, I also went through my scrap batting and I cut a bunch out for mug rugs. So whatever I do today for a fabric postcard, you can do the same thing for a mug rug if you'd like. And I also tried something new. I've been thinking about it, a squeaky chair. And I wasn't sure if it was something that was gonna work. Uh, squeaky chair. I've been looking at chairs. So if anyone has a good recommendation for a sewing chair, if you want to send me a message or something, I'd appreciate it. This is fusible fleece. Now I have these bits of fusible fleece and it's like, it's too big to throw away, but it's too small to do anything up. 
Yes, Lucy, I like to tidy up and sort my scraps and do all of that stuff, but I've kind of run to the end of that. And since I'm right in the middle of trying to pack everything up, there's not much left to sort. So sometimes I just want to play. So I thought with the fusible fleece, why can't I Franken piece it? So I zigzag these two pieces together. Some of these are, I think you can see the white lines where I just butted them together. Yeah, you can see them. I just butted them together and I zigzag stitched. I actually used a, a mystery thread. I think it's polyester by looking at it. And I thought, why can't I do this for fabric postcards? It's not like it really matters. It's not a tote bag or a zipper pouch. It's not a wall hanging. So I think for like mug rugs and definitely fabric postcards, why not use the fusible fleece for that? That way I'm not throwing it away and I'm rescuing it. Now in the future, I don't know how much I'll want to save these little thin pieces. But like I said, with these big pieces here, that's, that's a lot to be throwing away. That piece is it's like three and a half by four and a half. I can almost make a zipper pouch out of that if I don't want to have it in the seams and stuff. So I made a whole bunch of those this morning too. And that's another way for me to keep working when my mojo and creativity is gone. And when I'm done, I'll have these and they'll be useful. And I find that if I keep touching my craft things, if I keep tidying up if I keep maybe I'm cutting my scraps into two and a half inch squares whatever it is that's going to work for you if I keep touching my supplies somehow that my creativity comes back faster because when I walk away from sewing or knitting or crochet or embroidery or whatever I'm doing and I don't touch it until the creativity comes back I find that it takes weeks and weeks when I do oh yes Donna that would be great for the needle books when I touch things, I find that within a week, even just a day or two, I start looking at things. Maybe I'm sorting fabric and I'll start saying, oh, this would be good for this and that would be good for that. And then the creativity just starts oozing in little by little. I packed up in boxes. We're moving back home after refurbishment. Sadly, delay. Everything always seems to be delayed, doesn't it? Oh, no. It's just as bad here. People steal the windows and doors. They steal the copper pipes, the electrical wires. The poor people out on Sanibel and Fort Myers Beach that are finally starting to do things after the hurricane, things are slowly opening up, even if they're just using like food trucks instead of the restaurants. But they like stole all the washers and dryers and they stole all the stoves and stuff. It's, it's so sad. Sometimes, Jackie, it's easier. As I live here, this is the first time we lived anywhere. We've been here for 20 years. It'll be 21 years in October. And every year I go through and I sort through things. I'm like, okay, we don't need, like there's no sense having like little kitty cups and stuff when you know your kids are older. So sort through constantly. And I know I've purged a lot over the years, but as I'm preparing for a sell the house and leave move, oh my goodness, there's more than I even thought of. But if you have time, it, it's nice to get things done ahead of time when you're not rushed. Thanks, Lucy. I've always been, we've been in this house. It's 1,100 square feet. We turned the dining room into a bedroom. So we have four bedrooms because of the kids. So there's always been five of us in here. You're always going to trip over someone. Anyone can hear you talking in whatever room you're in. But... I mean, it's nice. I've loved being close to everybody. I think that's really good. It'll be nice to be spread out though. But when you're in those little quarters and you have crafts and hobbies like this, you have to learn to either be organized or hide everything. And I was never organized before. So it's really nice to look over in the corner. I'm like, oh, I wanted to play with these fabrics. Well, I can just pull this bin down. I can pull the aqua down and the turquoise bin. I can pull down the red bin and I can just use those fabrics and I don't have to spend 15 minutes searching for something. So it's been really good. Hi, Giovanna. Hi, Sue. Welcome, welcome. Glad you guys could make it. So what I wanted to show you, we've talked about a couple of things in a previous live stream. 
I've looked at chairs. I spent, since I didn't have any creativity this morning, I spent that time looking at chairs. I showed you guys these scraps one day when we, I think we were doing zipper pouches and we talked about how the, we were done talking different options for them. And I said that I would like them all sewn together and the end like binding and put them diagonally on a fabric postcard. So I went ahead and I stitched them all together and then I starched them just to give them some oomph because these guys are, okay, some of them are an inch and some of them are seven eighths and some of them are a little bit less, three quarters maybe. I agree, Donna, but if we don't move for like eight months and this chair is causing me lower back pain and, and it's bothering my neck and shoulders and it squeaks a lot and and I have to put pillows on and take pillows off. And like right now, the the back of my thighs hurt from the way I'm sitting in it. This chair, it sits like this and then it'll start til tilting down. This chair has never been good since the day the kids bought it for me. Of course, I picked it out because I thought, oh, a gaming chair would be great. But this gaming chair was not a good option. I'm gonna need a chair and a chair is gonna go with us wherever we go anyways. So having a desk chair is purchasing one like that. If I find one that I like, I have to start actually leaving the house and going to stores and like sitting on them to try them out. Otherwise, um, you know me, I love Amazon. Amazon's my thing. Anissa has, oh, she does, yeah. And it, hers looks a lot like mine, but she has a different brand. Exactly, Lucy. That's why I don't mind. Right, I want. I the chair has to have wheels, and like this chair came with arms. I just took them off, and I had problems with the chair even when the arms were on. So I know that taking them off didn't cause the problem. Probably didn't help it, but it didn't cause it. I have like I have a um, I have a dining room chair from my daughter's dining room set. So when she sells her dining room set. I actually have to bring a chair over to her house. I have that here, just a wooden chair, and I'll alternate with that. And then I have one with arms, but it's, the arms just get in my way. Hi, Kathy. Yes, I've been labeling so much, as much as I can. Well, I've packed two boxes, to be honest with you, and I wrote all over them, so everything that's in it, but I've been purging more and consolidating more than I'm packing. I emptied out seven of those plastic three drawer wheelie carts. And I, I laugh at myself because they're not the best. Like the ones that I've had that I've wheeled in and out of this room and other rooms, the, the plastic circle that the wheel sits into, the plastic piece is broken off. So I put the wheels in it, but I've been putting them out to the road one every day, every other day. So if anyone wants to come by and get them, and so far, uh, three of them have already been taken. And one of them had like broken plastic drawers, but they must have wanted them bad enough. So they were happy. I have a Franken pieced batting here. My fabric postcards are four and a half by six and a half, but I cut everything five by seven. So it gives me room for quilting and shrinkage and just changing things. This is a piece of like white muslin I think it's something a little different. This is one of those poly cotton blends that I can never remember the name of the fabric, but I know I don't like it, but it's gonna be great for this. So I have that, so I have batting and then the white fabric. Because with this, I thought that I could just take it like this, you know, and put, And then I'll just stitch down. It's a fabric postcard. It doesn't have to be the most amazing thing. I do want to make some more creative fabric postcards. The ones that take you, you know, two, three hours or all day to make because you're doing some, you know, you're painting with the thread and you're doing hand embroidery and adding all that stuff. But right now I just want to have some fun and play with some scraps. Giovanna, that sounds nice. I like the seaside themes and stuff like that. I, even when we lived in Connecticut, I always liked the ocean. Uh, when I was in Connecticut, I was hooked on sand dollars and horseshoe crabs. And then when we came down here and I saw my first flamingo. So I thought it would be fun just to take it like this and say, whoop, here we go. Cut that one. 
so that I can go there and then the next one depending on how close I want them and then I'll just put stitching down either side so there's the two green there well maybe I don't want that to happen so I can just flip this around this way and now the green over there doesn't bother me so I can trim that off so even if I want to because I have to remember I'm going to stitch them down which I'll count as my quilting I could quilt this whole white background if I was making this a little bit larger if I wanted to make a zipper pouch or just a mini art quilt or something I could quilt the background and then add these on and they're so skinny because as I said they're only like less than an inch I don't want to sit here and sew these two together and do that I can do that but I've done that enough that I want to try something different thank you yes Rosemary I have a video for the wrist cuff I wear a medical alert bracelet that jingle jangles a lot and it you know it annoys me so I don't want I know tapping on here is louder in the video than it is in my ears so I put this cuff on but I'll also put it on a lot when my wrists are bothering me my hands are bothering me because it hits that that pressure point right here and it warms it up it really helps a lot with the arthritic feeling in my hands I have the video on it and it's another one of those things like I need to make these for the shop and I just haven't done it just one of those days I just need to get myself a little more organized oh that would be fun Jackie a lot of times when you find those like the panels and stuff they have like little things that you don't know what you're going to use them for it doesn't work for the quilt you're making or something like that and then you can always you know change it up and put it into a smaller project like mug rugs and fabric postcards and stuff and you can put pins in this which um nope that's got that gray i don't want that gray there do i want Ooh, i can have some of that purple and then I have extra I made I made I prepared extra you can also take school glue I am prepared I even have my pressing station so here's one let's do two at a time so again I have the batting and then the fabric and with something like this I mean if you want you can go this way and you can go straight but sometimes when I look at things and I'm like oh yeah well everyone's done that that's kind of boring I, I it, it doesn't like scream to me oh that's so exciting Again, we're doing just scraps of fabric postcard. It doesn't have to be like thrilling, but by putting it on the diagonal, it just adds that little bit of interest to it. It makes it go, hmm, that's kind of neat. Sometimes I have that problem with my wrist. It, it doesn't, this doesn't bother me. I can feel the warmth from it. And every now and then I'll be like, oh, that's getting a little hot. And then when I have this little piece, I can just put that little guy down there because I still have more here that I can do like that. And then because this is the last of it, I don't have any problem taking these two scraps and throwing them away. Actually, maybe I do. What if, I don't know exactly how I have everything on here. I'd have to look at the measurements, but I feel like this corner looks a little empty. So maybe I'll put that just up there in the corner. Yes, I go back into my trash can. I don't put anything in this trash can over here except for fabric and batting and things like that because I go back into it all the time. Like, I wouldn't put uh, an old napkin or a tissue or something in there. I don't put paper in there. I'm at the end of my glue bottle. 
And you don't really need much, right? You just need a couple dabs because we're not permanently securing it. You can use a glue stick. I found 18 glue sticks out in the desk. Don't know if they're good, but that's for another night. What I've been doing, I tried taking a day off and just packing. And all I can think of is I'm wasting this day. I'm not doing any crafting. I need to do videos, you know, blah, blah, blah. I miss it. So then I started packing just at night. I'd take a couple hours at the end of the day and do some packing. So I thought I would try packing a little bit. Maybe I'll pack an hour in the morning and a couple hours at night, you know, cause I'm afraid I'm gonna run out of time. But by packing in the morning, that's what I think started this whole problem. It just sucked all the happiness out of me. So when I went to start the day making videos and stuff, I was just like grumpy. I, I lost all that creativity. My granddaughter has worn, has worn an allergy brace since she was two. She wears a silicone one with snap on this. That's fun. I've tried a couple different ones over the years. I've had this one for years, like 10 years or more. I just, I don't always think about it. It's just there. I just, I've never thought about getting a new one. Most of it doesn't matter anymore because I got this one because I have a latex allergy. So I got it when, you know, people were still doing things with latex. I have a couple other allergies that it's important for me to still have it, but it's like the latex is on there. It doesn't really matter much anymore. You rarely run across, like medical doctors wise and stuff. I, I haven't seen anyone that uses latex, all the stuff in the hospital and everything. Do I not have it? Oh, I don't have it open all the way. That would matter. And then when you hit it with the heat, it just makes the glue work and it washes out because it washes out of kids clothes and washes off your hands and it's repositional. So when you look at it and you see one piece is crooked, you can always change it even after you hit it with the iron. I use this all the time. Now I glue my bindings all the time. Now it's, it makes such a difference. I don't have to worry about pins and clips and whatnot. Now, if you put too much on, it does come through the fabric and it can get on your iron. So you have to be careful with that. When I really am into a lot of things, I will have a separate iron for like applique that I'm using for heat and bond or glue and stuff. And then I have an iron for good quilting stuff. And I clean this iron a lot. There is that. Oh yeah, you put the quilting name on it, like the Frixion pens. I've had those, they were out before when Robbie was in seventh grade. His teachers said, okay, it's time for you guys to start using ink pens, no more pencils. You're in middle school, you need to start being more, you know, as an older person, as when you get to high school, you use pens and stuff. But because you're gonna make mistakes and we don't wanna see things crossed out, you have to get these Frixion, you have to get erasable pens. So we found the Frixion pens and they were really cheap. But once the quilting community started using them, they got extremely expensive. Sometimes you can still find them for a decent price on Amazon and stuff. But a lot of times it's like, come on, put a quilting label on it. And you take school glue and you say it's for quilting and you put a little fancy picture on it. People are going to charge a lot more. Now I can do anything I want. I can do like fancy little design stitches on it. I'm just going to do straight stitching again fabric postcard. It doesn't need to be, doesn't need to be super fancy. I want them to be nice, but I don't need to spend an hour doing fancy decorative stitches on this version. Hi, Susie. Thank you so much. I didn't see you pop in. I'm not even going to worry. Is it, whoop, where's the foot pedal? You guys always lose your foot pedal. I always lose my foot pedal. I just have white thread in. I actually have a bobbin on the top and the bottom because I have some mystery 
bobbins. Sometimes you guys will send me, you'll, you'll pop a couple of pre-wound bobbins in when you send me some fun packages. I don't know the 100% content of it. It looks like cotton to me. It doesn't look like there's any polyester in it, but I wouldn't use it for like a bowl cozy. So I set those aside and I use them for projects like this because it doesn't matter what type of thread I use. If I use something I picked up at the thrift store, as long as it, ta t it passed the brake test and it's not just gonna fall apart. Thanks, Ruth. Hi, Marion. <clears throat> Excuse me. Then who cares? It's Again, a fabric postcard is gonna get handled and shown to people. I have mine, I have mine all packed up actually. I put them in a gallon size zip, Ziploc baggie so I don't lose them. But you can, maybe you're gonna hang them on the wall or something like that. If you have a thread that's from 25 cent store or something like that, that you bought at Walmart 10 years ago, it's not gonna matter. <gasps> Kathy, you cut your favorite fabric. I have, I have tiny bits that I, these aren't even tiny. I save all kinds of tiny bits. You guys save tiny bits too. You sent me these, the half square triangles. These are the little strips that whoever made them for whatever project, you guys sent me all the little one inch strips because you're as bad as I am. Some of you throw away everything and others of you save stuff. Because when you're making something like this, I mean, look how small these are. These pieces, as I said, they're one inch by an inch and a half, two inches long. You only need little bits to have fun. And I think it's great too for like a new sewer, like the grandkids or something. So to save thread, I'll just run along the edge, even off of the fabric postcard until I get to the next side. And then I'll just stitch down that. And because I'm moving everything around, having it glued, I can do that. Yeah, you do the snap test if it works great if i were to make a quilt that's not a wall hanging that's going to be used on a bed i want to use good thread it's going to last for years i want it to be washed and handled you know it's going to get tugged on and things like that but for projects like this why not use up this is going to be hidden in here nobody's going to see what's on the back so maybe you have some orange thread on a bobbin. Maybe you have a couple rounds of a purple. Instead of throwing it away, spooling it off and throwing it away, put it up at the top of your machine. I put a full bobbin in the bobbin of whatever I'm using. And at the top, I just keep changing it out to whatever color I need to use up. I keep finding random bobbins of thread. I found a little plastic container of them the other day, so I just keep popping them up there. Especially nowadays, things are getting quite expensive. And if I want to buy the good stuff, then I need to save money somewhere. And I really, I love trash day. Trash comes here Thursday morning. So Friday, sometime on Tuesday or Friday, depending on how full the kitchen trash is, I empty out the fabric trash can here. I empty it every week because otherwise I'll pick through it and I'll find something. I always find something. Yeah, use them up. Yeah, for free motion quilting, the new stuff, I use up, if, if as I said, if no one's going to see underneath, there's going to be something here and whatever I happen to be doing, even if it's like a mug rug or something, oh, um, pod holders and you have to have cotton thread, of course, pod holders and um, coasters, use it up. triangle the cutoff triangle bin I have here is eyeball to me it's been yelling at me lately it's been calling my name so I have this bin so you guys have shared some of your triangle cutoffs with me and I have all of these triangles and I know what I'm going to do with them I have three separate projects but they've all been calling my name so we're gonna have to do this maybe we'll do it on the next live stream because I saved them I even 
me and my Ziploc baggies, I put everything. So I have all these blue and white ones that go together for a project. I have a random things in here. This is from the recent project. So they, they're just calling my name. I have to do something with them soon because I'm being overrun. First, I have to put you away. <gasps> I found it! Sue, are you still here? Sue Smith, I found it, Sue. Found it for the fourth time. Oh my goodness, one of you guys sent me this. And I was never going to make one. I keep looking at them. I'm like, should I get the pattern? Shouldn't I get the pattern? I don't want to make them. And then I found it. I've got to make this bag. It's one of those bags that have all those zipper pockets in there and it has that binding. I, I told you, I knew I had it somewhere, Sue. So here it is. So this is on my list. But this weekend, I want to finish my flamingo. And I want to... I want to start on some cell phone pouches for the Etsy shop. All right, Sue, I'm putting it on the wall, on the shelf, next to those triangles. That's where I found it. So there we go. It's a secret, I can't tell you. I can't tell you what I'm doing with the triangles. I used up light colored embroidery bobbins. Yeah, I used embroidery thread when I was Frankenpiece in the batting. That was another way. Thanks, Lucy. I retreated the reels with my machine, cut off a slice of the bottom so that fits in the thread. Oh, I rethreaded the reels. Oh, I Excuse me, guys. I'm thirsty. Write it down and put a note on the fridge so that I can look at the fridge in three weeks, Donna, and go, what does that mean? Can I come? I mean, there's, there's a lot of things you can do with the triangles. I mean, you can do what we're doing right here with the triangles, just glue them down and stitch them down. And then if you think about triangles... Not everything has to be a half square triangle, but you can half square triangle and just like piece them. Sometimes on a rainy day, especially like on a Sunday, it, it, I don't know, it feels like Sundays are a nice day to put in a movie. And I usually have my tablet here and I have my little headphone. I, I wear one ear plug in so I can hear out of my other ear for those imaginary sign, sounds that I only hear. I have a million triangles to Teresa, we're going to do them. What's... All right, so I can't see the calendar. March... March 3rd. March 3rd. Let me write it down. Let me write it down in my little book here. I thought, I won't need it. I'll bury it. March 3rd. Okay. March 3rd. Ooh, what should we write it? I'm trying to write in all different colors. Um, let's do purple. Scrap, triangle, video, blue bin. Because then I know where the triangles are in the blue bin, so I know what I'm talking about. So I'm doing really good. I have videos. I have videos recorded all the way up to March 10th. So we'll do that on the live stream. On the first live stream in March, we have the second live stream. We might have to need two live streams for it. We'll see. We'll do something. I like just hanging out with you guys in the live stream and sewing like scraps. You were saying purple? I don't use purple a lot. I'm trying to, I did um, February's, most of January's and February's in the planner and it was all in like blue. But then when I went to zero in and look for something, my eyes were just kind of blurred and wandering everywhere. So then I started using different colors for each video that I did. So I have Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday. So if I did different colors, then it was easier for my eyes to zone in and see that one day. You know, it all depends on what you like for, if, like if you like doing the little tiny half square triangles, you can do that. Half square triangles, really two inches as small as I'll go. I don't like small half square triangles. I have a problem getting them to sit right. I have an issue with the seams and everything. They just irk me. And with the 
planner. I am down to seven post-it notes. I had <laughs> January's calendar. I must have had 30 post-it notes stuck to it to remind me to do certain things. Now I have certain places. I don't even have to put my bills on the calendar anymore and then like move the calendar when I live stream so you don't, so you guys, oh, you don't want to see that my electric was $125 this month. Ooh, it's private. But I just, I have a spot where I put my bills and I can, I can look at them on the same two pages and I can see, you know, like eight months right in a row to see how the bills fluctuate and what my electric is without having to pull up my app and check the charts and everything like that. I can see it right there. So while I said I would never be a planner girl, it's because I don't do all the stickers and I don't like do bullet points and all that. That kind of planner I never could do. I had to find a planner that would work for me and be, you know, for me, I had to figure out my way around a planner. And this might not work for long, but for now it's working. Wonky works for me too. I, and I, what I mean, I guess I should say, is when you have them and you go to square them up and you've got one side that's really this way and one side that's that way. And as they get smaller, you can only trim them so much. So there's our first one. Now we can trim it up. Let me give it a nice little press after the iron wakes up. Now I keep this little Dollar Tree mat because I can do my half, my half square triangles. You guys got me confused with that now. I can do my fabric postcards on here because this is a uh, six by eight. So they fit and I only get the batting stuck in here. So I only have to clean this up and it has two sides. And I bought these when they were only a dollar. So they weren't even a dollar and a quarter at that time. You guys know I'm gonna cry if there's no Dollar Trees in Arizona, right? I mean, I know I can always order online, but I love to just wander around the Dollar Tree. That's why I reverted to the sticky notes, Sue, because when I sit down here to sew and I look up, I see all the sticky notes. Now I just take this and I know I'm going to cut it. So I've got my six and a half inch ruler. This one is, it's all worn out here and it's all faded and everything. You can't see any of the numbers much around here. The quarter inch is basically gone, even up to almost a half inch. So it's great for, um, oh, half square triangles. It's great for fabric postcards. So I know six and a half this way and then four and a half this way I can adjust and say, okay, that looks good. And then trim off one. And then since it's small, I can just pick it up. Now I'm not gonna attach these and stitch around them with the cardboard because you're really gonna listen to a loud machine for a couple minutes as it goes around. Unless someone actually says, please, please, please. We can just keep on that course we can throw that away now I need to trim off the little bits and stuff but now we went from just like when you're doing string blocks it's kind of like oh, I don't know about that to this you have Dollar Trees I hope so I mean I'm willing to travel a half an hour my, my Dollar Tree is a mile and a half up the road I could actually walk if I wanted to oh thanks Marion I mean, I figured you do. I'm just hoping wherever we are, it's going to be close. So I think I think to send this to a friend to say, hey, you know, I've been thinking about you or here's a thank you fabric postcard. Instead of you can go to the store and you can buy a thank you card and you can write a lovely note then you send it to your friend and they save it for a while. And then they start writing a grocery list on the back or they put it in a drawer and they come around, you know, a year later and are like, I don't even know what I sent. They didn't say, they just said, thank you. What did I even send them? I'm not saving it anymore. So if you do this, now they have something they can decorate with. I'll show you what I'm still using. And these have worked really great. So I am still using these Loctite Fun Tacks. You can get these at Walmart. I got them at Amazon because, you know, I don't ever leave the house. 
And all of the little mug rugs and the different things you guys have sent me are still hanging up on the wall and they've been up there for months. So they work really great. All right, who's in Surprise and Waddell or whatever that's called? Is there some in that area? I know Phoenix is just north of there, right? That's the closest city to that area, so that's really good. I have a feeling we're going to, because, I mean, we're really spoiled here because it's been building and so much. Like, we have a lot of, we have a trauma center at the hospital. We have a children's hospital, a heart hospital, a cancer hospital. We have 15... Walmarts, we have 15, um, 15's the limit here in Cape Coral, so we have 15 Walmart, 15 Publix, we have three Home Depot, three Lowe's, I have what I call Restaurant Row, the big road down Pine Island Road, State Road 82, or State Road 80, or whatever it is, there's like restaurants all down there, you can just go restaurant to restaurant to restaurant. Marion, we are moving. We are moving. I keep telling my daughter, I said, I don't care. I don't care if you're angry or grumpy or someone says anything mean. I said, you better be nice. I said, we're all counting on you not to mess this up. I said, if it's getting bad and you think you're going to get mouthy and get in trouble, I said, you better ask the transfer early. Hi, Marie. You're late to the party. Oh, yeah, you could use it as a mouse pad. I've used mug rugs as mouse pads before. You're right. Yes, uh, the boys, everyone, we're all going together, all four of us. Robbie, Miranda, Justin, and me. And the five cats. We've been looking at, we, we saw some four bedrooms. You can get a four bedroom. First of all, the houses over there are bigger and less expensive than here. $2,000 a month for rent, $2,500 a month for rent for a three or four bedroom is not unheard of here. Excellent. All I know is there's something called the 303 out in that surprise area, and then that's where a lot of the developments are going. So that must be like your main road or something. We were trying to compare things like 303 must be like our US 41, which is Cleveland Avenue. That has That's like the main road, or our Del Prado Boulevard. That's the main road where everything gets built off of a Joanne's good. I'm not doing too much looking. I looked at the grocery stores because I wanted to see if there were the cheaper grocery stores there because our groceries here are very expensive. I watch uh, Frugal Fit Mom and she's always like, I went to this store. I mean, we don't even have Albertsons anymore. I thought they went out of business. They just moved out west. We don't get clearance items. Walmart has a clearance shelf and it always has um, some donuts, some pitas, and some of the French bread. But we don't, nothing goes on sale here. You'll get, Publix has BOGOs, buy one, get one. But their buy one, get one then brings them down to like Walmart prices. So their, their Hellman's Vegan Mayonnaise is $8 a jar. So when it's BOGO, it's $4. Well, it's like $4.27 or $4.47 at Walmart for one jar. So you're not, you know, there's not really a sale. It is colder there, actually, Giovanna. It's like this week, I think I saw it was like, what, in the 50s there? And we're in the 80s. <laughs> They're north of us. So Florida Florida sits down here on the United States, and Arizona is up here. So they're actually north of us. I'm like way down here, and they're over here. And they're also in the Midwest where, I don't know, Arizona doesn't have mountains. Do they have mountains? I heard some of you have said that there's snow in northern Arizona. I don't think there's any alligators. I kind of miss the alligators. 66 today and 75. Oh, that sounds nice. Yeah, this is crazy weather. We're in our third winter of crazy weather here anyways. It's just been hotter than it should be. I've been opening my windows in the morning and then I have to close them around two o'clock because it's 82 in the house. It's just too hot. Open Flagstaff, yeah. You also have Jackie Kunkel 
for um, Quiltville Works. I've been following her on her blogs and everything for a gazillion years from when I first started quilting. She moved from Connecticut to Arizona. And I know, I mean, she's just like, she does um, like a Whip It Wednesday. She goes live every Wednesday. She has all kinds of fun stuff going on. I know she's in Arizona and loves it. Jess and I are very excited. Yeah, a little bit, Lucy. I mean, I don't see alligators here. I, I'm assuming that, um, I shouldn't assume anything, but you guys have turtles. I think I, yeah, because in the Facebook group, there's a, they're having a, like a seminar, a class on how to deal with the turtles in your area. So we have turtles. I love the turtles. I, I'm guessing there's, I mean, I don't have flamingos running through. I have we do see alligators in the area. There's some in our canal, and we do see turtles come through my yard. But everyone's got wildlife, so this, it'll just be different. Surprises in the West Valley. You have the zoo. Yeah. We have the Naples Zoo here, but again, you have to drive, and things are just... I'm not, I don't want to spend $40 to wander around the zoo for a couple hours. It just seems outrageous. <laughs> 70 degrees is nice. I miss 70 degrees. All I know is I've saved a lot of money on winter clothes. I've had the same jeans for several years. I only wear them like 10 times a year. And... I haven't had a winter coat. I have a flannel shirt. That's my winter coat here. I have a denim jacket from either early in my marriage or from high school. It still looks brand new. Uh-oh. Dun, 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 dun. I made a mess with the bed. Oh, I wanted to show you guys something I ordered from Amazon today. Where is that package? You'll get a laugh out of this. So I ordered some new needles. I ordered two different kinds of needles. The self-threading ones, they have the kind that goes straight down the top. And you just push the thread. It's got like a little opening and the thread goes in. And then they have ones that go on the side. But people were complaining that when you do it, it's easy to get the fabric and other thread hooked in the side. So I ordered one package of each so I could see which one I like better. So this is the package that came from Amazon today. You see all those needles in there? I'll never be able to put thread in those eyes, huh? I'm like, come on, Amazon. I don't know who put it. There, there's a hole here, so obviously the needles fell out. I checked the package in it, the envelope that it comes in, the bubble mailer. There was no needles in there. Amazon's sending me a new package, so it's no big deal. But I'm like, who put that in the envelope empty? I mean, it says right on there, it's needles. The annual pass makes it reasonable. Good, good, good. Yeah, road runners. I was gonna sew, I don't even have thread. Thread's not even in the needle. Yeah, this definitely feels like cotton. You know, it has that dry feel, it doesn't have that um, synthetic plasticky feel like fishing line. <laughs> We've never really been off of the eastern coast of the United States. We flew to Oklahoma when Miranda was in the Army, and we went to their, and I know it's not boot camp anymore, but when she graduated from that nine or six or nine week training period or whatever, we went and saw her in Oklahoma. We went to Texlahoma at the border of Texas and Oklahoma, but that's really it. We've never gone over there, so it's going to be interesting. Uh, as I say, Justin and I are really looking forward to not having to mow the yard. All the houses we've looked at have, they have, the whole backyard is like all rocks and it has one little section of grass, I guess, for the kids or the puppies or something like that. 
So we're not even taking our old lawn mowers. We're taking our weed eaters because that's about all we'll really need over there, which will be, you know, wonderful. I told my kids I'm looking forward to a bathtub. This house doesn't have a bathtub in it. I haven't had a bath, you know, in 20 years, which sounds really bad. I've showered, of course. But I said, don't even, don't, don't come and see me for the first few days. I'm just going to be soaking in the bath, get it all out of my system, and then I'll probably never use it again. I'll definitely be organized with everything because once I pack everything up, I'll have purged so many things and, and organized so many things that it should be really easy, knock on wood, to set up a sewing room. But I'm definitely going to take you guys along when I sell this house, when I go to the kids' house, when we travel across the world. Yeah, soak it in the bath. And I know there's, yep, yeah, like, okay, from what I remember of baths, and I'm sure everything has changed, but back in the day, you weren't supposed to take a lot of baths and use, like, the oils and the bubble baths and stuff because they weren't good for the female anatomy. But I, I imagine with all the bath bombs and stuff now that things are okay. In hindsight, I should have trimmed with the rotary cutter and the ruler a lot of these threads off. It would save me the trouble from having to do them after they're sewn in. But it's okay. It is okay. That's the thing, Giovanna. You kind of want to have both. I don't know how many of you are in some of the newer houses they have now, but where you have you have your sinks in the mirror in one spot, and then you have like shower, and then a bathtub, and then the toilet's like in a closet where you close the door, so that everyone can be in the bathroom with you all at the same time, and nobody will see anyone. That's a little bit crazy. Dr. Teal's Lavender Epsom Salts. I'll remember that because I know about Dr. Teal's Epsom Salts. I just never tried lavender. Sharon, you got tired of all the talking and no sewing results, so I unsubscribed. Is that to me? Well, I hope you have a great day. I'm sorry this channel didn't work for you. Thank you for letting us know. So this one, I don't have anything in the corner, so I'm going to have white corners. But the way it ends up, I have this one in the corner, so that's going to work out fine. I actually went through and I unsubscribed from a lot of channels recently because, you know, I just don't watch them anymore. And... And I don't, I always feel bad, so I never unsubscribe, but they're like cross stitch and I don't cross stitch and that's all the channel does. And it actually, it's not always the best thing because a lot of times YouTube will stop showing you things because they know it's something you don't watch. So thanks Ruth. Me, Linda? Yeah, no, we're 100% moving. I have a feeling we're moving one way or the other. Even if, you know, God forbid something happens and Miranda decides not to stay with the company or the company decides they don't want her anymore. I, there's really not anything left in Florida for us. There, There's not like family here. There's not a lot of friends or anything. And it's just not, it's not for us anymore. So I, I, I'm not surprised. I wouldn't be surprised to see us move anyway. The company is not paying for the move. We have to pay for it. The company is not paying for the rentals or anything like that. So everything's out of pocket anyway. There's really not any difference between having, like, Justin is actually working now with all of his heart conditions. He's finally gotten a lot of the medical stuff again, knock on wood, under control that he can work at Walmart. And some people might say, oh, your son's working at Walmart. But you know what? He needs a job that he doesn't work a lot of hours and that's flexible and it's not a lot of high demanding stress. So whether he works at Walmart in Florida or he works in Walmart in Arizona or Kentucky or Utah, it, it's still the same. So if we're not happy in Florida, then, you know, why not go?
A job is a job, exactly, Giovanna. And for me, at this point, I'm like, whatever. I mean, you guys, I could have moved to Arizona three months ago or to Alaska, Hawaii, Germany, and you guys never would have known. You only see right here. So whether I'm doing this right here in Florida or Arizona, it doesn't matter, you, unless I'm doing the side conversations like, you know, did you see the hurricane and let's go look at the canals or something like that or whatever. So I can do this anywhere, which is one of the great things about it. So, all right, these two are done. It's four o'clock. Let me take a second. I'm trying to behave and not chat with you guys so much that I forget to take my four o'clock. I can't get into the pill container. When I get off of a schedule, I always get messed up. It's been talked about, it's always been compared like Arizona and Florida, they're like sister states, one's here on the East Coast, one's on the West Coast. A lot of it's pretty similar, one's hotter, one's cooler, one's got this, one's, you know, one rains, one doesn't rain, but it's always pretty similar. I, I explained to my daughter, the people from the East Coast, let's say Connecticut and New York and Massachusetts, they come to Florida as snowbirds or to retire. And then when you go to the other coast, people in Utah, Washington, uh, I don't know, Idaho, wherever, they go to Arizona as snowbirds in the wintertime and to retire. So it's the same thing, it's just on different coasts. Exactly, Marion. Sometimes I hesitate to say things. Well, sometimes I just run my mouth and things come out and I'm like, oops. But... I mean, he, he does he does a job, he does a good job. He used to be in restaurants just like Miranda and working in a restaurant in the kitchen is so stressful. He just, he's like, I don't wanna do that anymore. For his first job, after dealing with all the heart surgeries and all of that stuff, he says, I'd rather go to Walmart and if something happens and I can't do it, it's Walmart. You know, it's not like they're depending on him the turnover rate at any type of place like that is always high. But if you went into something, like say he was a restaurant manager again, they depend on him. You know, he has to come in on his days off. He has to stay late and come in early. But at Walmart, he can say, no, no, thank you. I don't want to work tomorrow. And he doesn't have to. Hey, everyone needs something. Some people, they'll look down on people and they're like, oh, you stock shelves at the grocery store and i'm like where do you buy your food well i buy my food at the grocery store well who do you think puts that food there why are you giving that retail person such a hard time and you know you, you see those videos of people online you know just berating and yelling and screaming at these minimum wage high school workers well you're going to taco bell to eat someone's got to work there me too sue i i'm thrilled Thanks, Marion. I, I think they came out, it's kind of cute, you know? Again, I, you know, is someone gonna save this forever? Well, maybe a crafter would, but not everyone. Maybe you want to, like these are all the clothes from, you know, you made like, um, maybe you had different handkerchiefs from your grandmother or something, right? So you made a bunch of little fabric postcards with the little, they all had holes and stains and stuff. So you cut them up or your granddaughter's dresses or something, or maybe your grandmother passed away or your great grandmother and you took some of her things and you made little fabric postcards for the family. This isn't, this isn't much, but if you don't get a lot of things in the mail and someone sends you one or it has a meaning to it, I think they're really nice. Cheryl's making up people now. I do that all the time. Exactly, Anna. I, there's always someone, I know this group of people, my regulars that are always hanging out with us, you guys are always very supportive and I always appreciate it. But then there is those people that are hiding in the background that will send me an email or wait later and put a message on a video or something. And some people can just be nasty. All right, so I have 
I have this random bag. When I was looking through Ziploc baggies for this video, I'm like, oh no, that's the good Ziploc baggie. I can't use that today. Oh no. I will show you exactly what I do. I have, have my stash right here. Okay. I order all kinds, again, off of Amazon, but you can get them at Dollar Tree and Hobby Lobby and stuff. So this fabric postcard's done. It's on a uh, comic book board that I cut the size, four and a half by six and a half. I got the fuzzy, so I put my name on it. I don't, I, I don't always write, but now that I have the friction pens, I write a little bit more because then I can erase them. And I have these clear envelopes, so I pop it in a clear envelope. And it's got peel and stick, so I close this over, right? And then this is, I buy some type of address envelope thingies or something. If you guys really need to know, I have a video on mailing these and everything. And um, it gives links to all kinds of stuff. I just buy these on Amazon. So it's peel and stick. So I put it over it and it seals this up even though it's already sealed and it covers it up. And then I stamp my address here and I write your address. And then when it goes through the mail, it goes like this. Now you can mail it just like this, put a stamp on it. You can put it in another envelope. What I bought on Etsy, you can get these. These are, um, it measures how thick your envelopes are. For me, it needs to be, this is one, is this one inch? No, it's not an inch, I'm lying to you. This is a half an inch. So the mail it for a regular postage, a regular stamp, it has to fit through here. So I don't put any buttons or anything like that if I'm going to mail it in these clear envelopes. So it fits through, no problem. I can put an international stamp, which is like $1.25 or $1.50 or something. So I mail these internationally. I like to put it in an envelope because I went down, again, in the video on how to mail these and stuff, I went down and talked to Postmaster General, whoever the man, whatever you call the manager of an individual post office, and we discussed it. He says that if you put it like this through the machine, sometimes the machine can get hooked on something or it goes through these wheelies so you can get grease on your postcard. He says the best way to do it if you're going to do this regularly is to put it in an envelope. So I said, can I put it in a clear envelope? He said, yes, but they have to have a way to cancel the stamp. So that's why I put this on. So now they can put, I can put a stamp on it. They can cancel the stamp. I put a little flamingo stamp down here. I have a stamp for my mailing address, which I'm going to have to order new ones. Hi, Jody. You guys have Mormons we have we have Amish just about an hour and a half north of us in um, Sarasota area that's interesting Marion I have never thought of using the tortilla bag my grandmother saved the the bags from the loaf of bread all the time we put wet shoes in it we put wet clothes in it use them she had us put them in our diaper bags so you could put the dirty uh, diapers in them and stuff like that. But now people say they have all kinds of problems and, oh, it'll never go through the mail, never go through the mail. But if it's the size of a regular envelope, you can mail it. And this fits into the category. I Googled, you know, U.S. mailing size. The gentleman told me the mailing sizes. So I went with four and a half by six and a half because it was the perfect size for this envelope. And then I could cut the comic book boards and then I cut this it was perfect for it so it all works out really well so that's what I do and I've mailed I probably mailed close to 200 by now so you figure I mail them out to my patrons every Christmas I mail them to my patrons when they sign up I mail them to my patrons when they change tiers and I probably should mail one when they leave, but I haven't thought about it. Now I feel bad because I never mailed it to the other people that have left. You know, thank you for supporting me. I I'm sorry to see you go. I hope you can, you know, we see you on YouTube or something like that. And I mail them to you guys all the time. I keep telling people in the comments, you know, I've chosen your name. Would you like a fabric postcard? But either they don't see it or they don't want one. So if you 
have been here and you've never received the fabric postcard, if you'd like one, I'd be happy to mail you one of these. You just have to email me. So anyway, I have these. I don't know what's in it, so let's look. Oh, okay, so these have these have some. They look like they were disappearing nine patches. Close enough, you know what I mean. Oh, and there's some of these. These are fun. So I thought this bag could easily be turned into, this is from the calculator strips. So for something like this, I would probably sew things together first before putting it on here. So maybe I might want to I might put, a, put that together. Sometimes I like to just try things out. Very true, Marion. I really like these fabrics. I actually have this. So whoever sent me this sent me these scraps too. So those, see now this I could probably turn into a zipper pouch. Oh, look. So I have this guy. So he can go on. Well, look, he can go gray to gray. And a lot of times I don't even get the scissors. I just pop the seams. So I can even do this quilt as you go. So if I put this right down here, and if I made I sewed these together. Let me see. I'll show you. I'll show you. We'll make one more quick one before we go today. Oh, I bought a tortilla press. Oh, that is on my list. Oh, that's right, Marion. I don't have the time. I don't even notice anyway. You know, sometimes, well, a lot of times your your eyes and your brain will fill in spaces anyways, because I know my I know my name still, thank goodness. You just automatically just see it how it's supposed to be. We're also gonna, I, I need to play a little bit. We're gonna do a video eventually of using up all these threads. I have a couple ideas. I need to find the video I saw about one of them to rewatch it. So then I'll take this and, well, you know what? No, that's good. Well, maybe if I put this, see, maybe if I put this in the center, then I can have this on the top and this on the bottom. And then you just kind of created something. And it's, it's not, Again, it doesn't have to be like this earth shattering, amazing thing. You just have fun. Like, okay, what if your grandparent and your grandkids, even if your grandkids live in the same city as you do, if you use some of their fun, their favorite fabrics that you made them a quilt and you used the leftovers, you can mail them a fabric postcard. I mean, kids love to get cards in the mail. This way they don't expect money in it because it's not a card. So we, oh, I was gonna do quilt as you go. Watch, I'll do it anyway. So that, go like that. I'll do it again. You guys get me in trouble all the time because I forget what I'm doing when I'm talking. Although, to be honest, I mess up all on my own. The Patreon thing, now that I am amongst, do I use a different site to find your video for Patreons only? You go right to the Patreon site, Donna. If you want, you can email me at the rsoundcrafts at gmail, or you can message me on Patreon. But you just go there, and now that you signed up, you'll be able to see the videos. So just scroll down, and they're all right there. Now, Lucy, I, I've mailed to England a lot, no problem, and it cost me $1.50. All I have to do is I come into my 
Again, I reuse things. These are for my kids because they were like 10 cents one year, so I bought a bunch of them. I go into my little stamp container and I pull out the international stamp. They are global. These ones have to be from 2020. I think they were like $1.25, but they're they're forever stamps. I think they might be $1.49 now. It just takes one stamp, one per month. You get, you get a video every Sunday, Donna, no matter what tier you're on for $5 up, there's a video every Sunday. Now, maybe I, I wrote something wrong on the tiers and it says once per month, because there was one sometimes in the past couple years ago, I was doing, okay, if you were at the $5 tier, you got one video. If you were at the $25 tier, you got two and so on. Lucy, if you'd like one, just give me your mailing address and I'll send one to you and then we'll see whether or not they make it to you. Because really, this means nothing to me in material cost because it's just scraps and fun stuff. And I franken piece the batting and stuff. So in the cost of a stamp, like I said, it, it's nothing. And Donna, it could be there. When I change the tiers, I try to go through and correct them all. But I might have missed something. Some tiers, the higher tiers will get a postcard every month. And then even though I quilted as I went, I can still add more quilting to this, which I probably will. So here, let's do this. I try to refreshen it up, fresh it up every year. The only thing I, I did this year is I left all the $2 patrons, but I, I set it up to where there's no more $2 patrons. They just get a fabric postcard at Christmas. Yeah, the, the send a, a letter from here, because this this fabric postcard is a, is a, if it's less than one ounce everywhere around the world and two ounces to California. I don't know why Canada gets two ounces. I almost said California, but Canada, I can use two ounces. But it, it's just cost of one first class stamp. If I, I can mail anywhere in the world for the costs, because it's mailing from here. I know postage from you guys mailing places isn't always the cheapest. And with these, you can, again, use up the leftover threads. You can use your fancy stitches. So when I do this, I just like to, I'll cut these off. now. I can, these are pretty big, so I can save them and use them again. But I can take any of my fancy stitches and do like the quilting again on it. I call it like top stitch quilting. I don't know why, I just make things up as I go. And then all of these will go back and I'll put them back into the one, I keep them all in the one bin. So that when I'm having one of these days or I just, I have, I have an hour at the end of the day and I want to do something. So I go ahead and I just make these. I know if someone buys something from my shop, the postage is extremely expensive. Someone was so sweet and they purchased two of my tote bags. They bought one and then came back and bought a second. And to mail them to Germany, uh, one tote bag was $50 to mail. Anything over four ounces, anything over four ounces and the price just gets crazy. I think for me, just by doing that top stitching right on the seams right here that for this style it just like finishes off and i'm like okay now it looks like it was meant to be something you know it just adds that little bit so before i do anything because i can't see my edges i'll go ahead and trim off all of this so that i can see crumb filters are like don't throw that away this way I can see where my borders are because I want to make sure I still have the batting underneath. So I have a little 
batting showing or the white fabric. So I just want, oh, I didn't need to put it right on that white fabric. Whatever, that's fine. It didn't hurt anything. So, okay, I'm gonna, so maybe we'll do that. So I don't have, well, all right. This is a little different than when you're sewing blocks because I'm gonna end up with just that little bit there. It's all right. I don't like to do it, but it's okay. And then four and a half by six and a half. And this isn't my good rotary cutter that I use just for fabric, so I wanna keep that blade sharp. So now I have this. Oh, thank you, Susie, that's no problem. I, I like to send out I lost it. I love to send out fabric postcards. I really, it brings me joy. Sometimes I'm like, oh, that's kind of ugly, Robin. And other times, like, I might look at this today and say that's gorgeous and come back three weeks from now and say, ew, what were you thinking? But, so I just used up scraps that these are left over from a project. And you might go, oh, I'm not gonna ever use that. I'll just toss it. And it's all up to you if you don't, find joy in doing this, then saving these fabrics is totally stressful and wasteful. You know, pass them on to someone else. If, if you don't want to throw them away, but you don't want to use them, then you can just share them. Yeah, 50 euros, because if that's even equivalent to dollars at all, I mean, it's expensive. I'll give you a close up on this. I do. Ding, ding, ding. I use this, oh, I call it a feather stitch. Thanks, Marion. I call it a feather stitch. I like to match the thread to whatever the card is. So I, I'll just go ahead and I'll make a bunch of these. And then I'll get to the point. You guys, I'll show you really quick. There was, I had a question on another video this morning. So let me show you how I get to this point. Cause it's only 4.30, we can do what we want. So I have these three. So let me bring in three. And remember, if you're going to be doing these things, then you should keep yourself organized so you can just pull it out at any time. So I have, thank you everyone. So I have, this is just a Dollar Tree. Both of these are from the Dollar Tree. So I went and cut a bunch of, uh, my son bought me a big paper cutter. It was on my wish list from Amazon. He was so sweet and he bought it for me last year. These are all the comic book boards. So I keep them all cut and ready to go. And I have all of my labels. And then here I keep all my envelopes. So I know too, I'll never run out because I didn't know. Like sometimes you're like, oh, I'm all out of orange felt. How did I not know? I can see, I just ordered new envelopes because I saw that I was low. So I'll come in here and I'll pull out three of my comic book boards. And I keep these really close by, I keep these in the room that I'm working in because I make them all the time. And then bring over this and my glue I was using leftover bits of heat and bond that I had I would put the heat and bond on here and then adhere it to the comic book board but then I ran out I made so many fabric postcards I ran out so then I started well what about if I use glue because I only need to hold this together just long enough to put this on. So what I started out originally doing is I would just take this and I would put four of the clips on it and I would do the stitching around. But as I started stitching, either the clips would get in my way or the postcard would move a little bit so then I could see the postcard, so that didn't work. So that's when I started doing this. I like to put the shiny side to right on. I've changed that up recently too. So I just take some glue and I don't go crazy. You can sew through the glue. Connie has a question. Connie, Connie. Thanks, Sue. That's what we're working on right now. I do stitch around them. I showed you guys the stitching. But for this part, I just glue. 
and I I'll stitch around one if you want, but it's 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 a lot of loud noise. I don't even you know it doesn't need a lot. It just needs to hold it in place. Look, I'm not even going to remove those red threads that are sitting on there. And it's really really precise and fancy. You see that? And then I just put it on. And shiny side down. I used to put shiny side up. Now I do shiny side down. I should just put that down. Remember the heat activates it. It could, I mean, the glue's going to dry, right? Hi, Rose. You're going to have a little bit to watch later, a lot of rambling, a lot of talking about moving and purging the house in other states and stuff. Yeah, even for a glue stick. The glue sticks always dry out on me, but I have several bottles of the Dollar Tree glue and they last for years. And then, just because... <laughs> I feel like if I put the clapper, what is a comic book for? When you buy comics, they put them in these plastic sleeves to protect them because, you know, they're valuable and stuff. They put the comic book board behind it so it can sit up in their little plastic bins when they store it. So it keeps the comic from getting any creases and folds in it. Yeah, I have a lot of glue sticks, but they all just seem to go bad. Good night, Lucy. Send me your mailing address whenever you think about it, and I'll send one out to you. Thanks for hanging out with us. Okay, that's it. Now they're attached. I mean, is it, sometimes they get a little bowed, but most of the time they're fine. And you can always go like this and stick them underneath something heavy anyway, put them in a book. All right, so I have to change it up. Let's see, let's do, this one has white on it, so we'll be able to see it better. Let me take off my mystery. Okay, are we still there? There's always gotta be someone trying to call. Pile of books, yep, whatever you happen to have. I said you could put white, but it, it's got the white comic book board, so I'm always like, I want something fun and colorful. Now I can grab, like I said, old thread. I have, I've shown you guys my thread stuff before. So I have the container of old thread. So if I want to do a bunch of quilting, it's good thread. There's nothing wrong with it. It's Hopes and Clarks, right? I mean, it's even on the nicer spool, so it's good thread. But sometimes I want something, I feel like for some projects I want to use the more expensive, fancier thread to add value to the product or to make sure it's going to last or whatever. But for fabric postcards, while it's, I consider them to be emotionally valuable, they don't have like a high value. Yeah, you can buy comic book boards on Amazon. You don't have to go to a comic store. That's where I buy mine. They come, well, they come like 200 to a package. You can use, you can use the box from like a cereal box, just put it backwards so you only see the brown part. Some people just use um, cardstock. Some people use fabric. I like, I like how stiff it is and how it's easy to handle. It goes through the mail really well. And I feel like for a piece of art, I tried to cardstock, but for the piece of art, I like it to be a little bit more sturdy. Index cards, yep, index cards will work. It really, especially if you're putting it in an envelope, you know, if you mail a regular, if you put a one page sheet of paper in a letter, right, and you mail it, that envelope is all flippy floppy. So you can have whatever. Hmm. Let's use this color. This is Missouri Star. I find
Finder thread is pretty good. They have a nice variety of colors. It works fine. I use it in all my projects. And it's a, it has a lot of thread on it, but it's a small spool, so it still sits like my Juki has the horizontal one for the thread, so it fits in there nicely, but I put it up here. I put it upside down because of the way it comes off the spool. I don't know if it really matters, but I always like it to come off the back of the spool. So. You can use, some people use a satin stitch, but now if you use a satin stitch or a zigzag stitch or something along those lines, you have to be careful that it's not so super tight. With this, it doesn't matter too much, but if you're using like cardstock, it'll actually perforate the cardstock. Yeah, cardstock, and it'll just, separate so if you're going to do that i would do a line of straight stitching first and then you can do the zigzag just to make sure nothing falls apart i like a fancy stitch that goes a little bit over the edge but looks nice now my old brother sewing machine had a darning stitch and it looked like a heartbeat and i used to love to use that one so that's why I use a feather one, it's close enough. So I just put it in, let me see, I gotta find the feather stitch. It's number 17. And then practice on some scrap fabric first so you can see how wide you want it and stuff. I know I want 2.0 and 6.0. I always bring my thread to the top so there's no messes on the back. Now my corners are always horrible. What size? I'm still using the 9014. It does dull the needle. Sewing through batting dulls the needle. Sewing through fleece dulls the needle. Sewing through felt dulls the needle. Uh, doing paper piecing dulls the needle. But you know what? That was the reason why I got this second machine. Two reasons. To always have a backup. And I wanted something that didn't cost, but like a, this cost $125, I think, when I got it. And... I wanted something that I could use for sewing through this without having to worry about the needle. I used to take my needle off and I used to save the good needle, put the old needle in. Now I just use this for this type of project and I bring my Juki up when I'm making quilts and such. Or you can change out the needle and just go back and forth all the time. And if I had a brand new needle in this machine, I probably, well, I, well, let's face it, I would do it because needles are not that expensive and you have to change them often anyway, off, often anyways, right? Hi, June. And then I just daydream and I watch a movie and I talk to myself. And I stitch off the corner, lift my needle and I come back on. And I think it's because of this stitch that a lot of times I just can't get the corner just right. I love this color thread. That's why I do all of them at once and then I set them up by color. So I'll do all of the ones I want. I call this a binding stitch. You know, it's not binding, but since it's going around the outside of like a quilt, I just call it that. Oh, Giovanna. I used to be that way, but I've been changing my needle an awful lot. I clean my sewing machine every day now. It's just crazy. I don't I don't know what happened to me. I'm I'm being such a good girl. So this part takes a while because of the stitch. Exactly, Jody. That's why I make all of my postcards and then I come back and I put the cardstock, uh, the comic book board on it and I do the final stitching last. So it's, it's I, unless I'm just making one, I'll make one if I'll be like, oh, so-and-so is having a birthday today. Oh, or, or this week, or, you know, maybe Jody's having a bad day or Sally and Joe and John and Amy's having a bad day. Let me just send them a fabric postcard just to say hello. <laughs> So I'll make the fabric postcard all the way through, start to finish like this, and stitch it through. I mean, you'll know if you're going to make an entire quilt and you're going to start sewing all of that one quilt, 
you're going to put a new needle in anyways because you're doing one big project. But if you're just, if you're sewing a zipper pouch and you're sewing a mug rug and you're making a coaster, running it through one thing of cardboard like this is not that big of a deal. And backstitch and done. So when I'm doing these for my patrons and maybe I'm doing 50 of them or something, yeah, it, it kind of gets boring after a while. So there you go. And I like it how it's on the back. And then I take my ruler and I take some type of a pen. Oh, let's see. Let's do blue. I don't use the friction pens because, you know, they come on and off with hot and cold and stuff like that. Where's Kathy? I changed my needle when it breaks. Yeah. Well, you know what? You know what really irritates me and makes me swear is you put a brand new needle in and you sew for five minutes and it breaks. I'm like, oh, oh, I, I was stitching with that old needle for so long. I just put it in and now it's going to break. So I drew my line in blue. Well, maybe now I want to, I want to write my name in purple. I backstitched at the beginning and the end. Yes. You guys, if you think about it, anytime you're stitching, you're going to backstitch at the beginning and the end. If you're sewing quilt blocks, you don't need to because it's going to come to the point where you've stitched this one to this one. So now that's crossed over it. But if you're ever going to do just one thing and it's never going to cross over like on this, you have to backstitch. Now this one, before I put it through, I'll either, normally when I pay attention, I make sure there's glue all the way around here because I don't like this. I don't like when this is flopping when I'm sewing. So before, you can always like put a stitch around it before you put on the cardboard. Or I, I like to make sure I'll go through and I'll put more glue on there. But it, that's it. Oh, so then I sometimes I try to pay attention. They have like a stamp you can put on here that says postcard. You can write the names and stuff like that. I probably should stop doing the line and just put my name down there, but I've been doing it for so long now. Then I go slow because oh, I started writing my name. R-S-I-S-L-A-N-D Crafts 2023. Because when I hurt between the shoulder surgeries and the neck problems, sometimes my hand will go like this. And sometimes the connection between my brain and my hand, I can't write the word I'm thinking of. That's why I've been using the Frixion pens. They help a whole lot. So there you go. Now you're all set. Put it in an envelope. Put it in the mail like this. Pop it in a clear envelope. Now it's all protected. Now what I think, okay, I know I'm a weirdo, and I know some of you guys probably do the same thing, just not a lot of people. When I go through the grocery line, I'm, I always wonder, does anyone wonder why did this crazy woman buy cat litter, sour cream, and pickles? What the heck is she doing, you know? So when I stand in line, I used to stand in line at the bank, and someone would be getting out like $25 in ones, and I'd think, well, you know, why are they getting all those ones? So I like to imagine that this is in the mail. Now, my mailman gets these all the time, so he could care less. He sees them in my mailbox every week. But as it's going through, and it's going through the mail station, someone sees it, and maybe they're having a bad day, and now they're happy because they saw something fun coming through the mail. And then the mailman or the mail lady's got to deliver it to you, and they're happy because, oh, look, someone sent something fun to them in the mail. That's what my imagination does. Because, I mean, why not? Why not pretend and think about and dream about someone else being happy? Someone has to see these as it's going through the mail, and it'll make them happy. And if not, I am extremely happy by sending it to you. Oh, I've done that a few times. Usually my machine just starts making that loud chunky chunky chunk screaming noise because I didn't move the needle properly for a zipper foot or something like that. Oh, that scares me so bad. But thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. I had a lot of fun. I actually feel better now, so I'm so glad I didn't just say like, oh, I have a headache and I'm not feeling creative. I'm going to cancel. But this is what I do. And now, as like I said, I feel better now. 
So when I come in here tomorrow morning, I'm going to be all geared up and ready. And if you follow me on Instagram, you've seen this already. But what I'm going to work on this weekend, I need to finish for our 50,000 subscriber giveaway. I've been working on the Flamingo. I really appreciate you guys hanging out with me. So I think this is, this is like the butt. I had so much fun working on this. This is like, it's a great pattern. The, it's a colorful book. It has all the directions. It's amazing. And it doesn't feel like work because it's just, everything is put together so weird. You know, so it has all of these pieces. It is so big. I just have, I just need to finish it up. You see, I have all these blank spaces. Oh, here's knobby knees. Knobby knees and then the little feetsies. So it's so cute. Thank you guys. I, I just, it just feels so nice. Yeah, I always feel better. I, I shouldn't say never, but there's a lot of times probably about every third or fourth live stream i'm like why do i do live streams I, I shouldn't do live streams i don't want to do a live stream and then i come here and i always feel better when i'm done i always feel like yay little flamingo christmas tree sounds like fun just by hanging out with you guys i always feel so much better and look at this i've left this out just so i can see it all the time it's a flamingo batik isn't it beautiful so I put that in through here. So someone's going to win this. And if they don't want that, then, then I got something else somewhere. I'm going to let you guys choose. So whoever wins, they can choose the flamingo or they can choose the scissor and spool. Thank you, Sue. I do too. Have you seen animals on pool pattern TV? I don't think I have. I know pool pattern TV. I catch it every now and then. Bye, Helen. Enjoy your nap. So if you, if your name is gets chosen, you guys can either have the red spool because I had the red striped. I want to make another spool too. So I, I, I need to be careful with my time. I want to finish the flamingo and then I want to start in on the cell phone pouches. I even pulled fabric for that too. I had so much fun making those notebooks that I have. I pulled the fabric to make a cell. I think I can make a cell phone pouch out of these. I have two different versions, two different patterns I have that I'm going to make. And I think I can go ahead and use this. I think this will be really cute. Yeah, I love the flamingo. I'm going to make one for me. I just haven't decided. I, I'll probably make, I think I want to make two where the ones you can have a right facing and a left facing. So I want to put, I think I want to make one with one facing one way and one facing the other way. Let me see. Oh, here it is. This version. I really love this pink one, so I think I need to be, yeah, my Florida memory. Oh, Marion, it's going to be months. Well, as soon as I can sell this house, I'm going to move six miles away in the same town. So when I know that's coming close, I will put an announcement out and just say, everyone, you know, whoever needs my address, if you're mailing anything, don't mail anything, you know, hold everything. I'll move in with my kids and then, or we'll sell the house and move straight to Arizona. I don't know. But Arizona, it's not supposed to be till somewhere between October and April. I mean, anything could change. If my daughter can be a traveling trainer and help working in the different um, mission barbecues throughout the country, because they're, they're always in need. And she's a really good trainer, so she's really good at helping the management team and helping the employees and being like a fill in an emergency and opening new stores and stuff. She's really good at that. Then she might be able to just do that and we leave early 
but right now we're looking at October to April. Thanks, Tyler. What well, you can go ahead and watch the replay, Giovanni. I had G oh, sorry, Giovanna. I had a PO box. They're expensive, and I actually have to leave my house. And I never know if there's mail in it or not. So it's, sometimes you guys just surprise me, and sometimes you'd let me know ahead of time. So I'd have to go and check the mail. And not that I expect anyone to send me anything, but for me to get in my to leave my house, get in my car drive across town, check the P.O. box, and when it's empty, it's like sad. I'm like, there's no mail. I mean, if I was expecting something, you know, just go over and get it. So that's why I just give out my home address. I, to be honest, when you live here, anyone can get your home address. It's, it's online. It's not hard to get people's mailing addresses down here. I don't know how it is like in Arizona or anywhere else, but you can just look it up online. So I, I give it out and it just, it's less expensive and the mail comes to my house. So sometimes I'll open my front door and there'll be like mail sitting there. And I'm like, Ooh, that's so exciting. Even if you guys tell me, you're like, you send me an email today. And you're like, Robin, I sent out a package and the post office says it'll be there on Tuesday. I'll be like, cool. I'll get a message from the post office. I'll set it up so that when it's delivered, I get a text message. But I tell you, when I go to sleep and I wake up the next day, my mind is completely erased. I totally forgot that you told me you're sending it because there's nothing I have to do. It's gonna come here automatically. So when it shows up, I'm like, ooh, exciting. I forgot about that. So that, that's the fun thing about mail. Now, this thread, I don't know what it is. I, I'm pretty sure it's 100% cotton, but I don't know 100%. So I put it in my mystery container of pre-wound bobbins. These are either 50-50 or polyester, and these are the ones that I think are cotton. Because you know they get that, that kind of fuzzy feel, they get that little grimy look to it and stuff like that. They don't always stay spotlessly clean. So I keep it in there. I'm really big, I showed these before in a video, but I'm really big on, first of all, I love these donut ones, but I'm really big on separating my threads. So I always know exactly what it is. Like this is off of the big giant spool. I have my white and this is like silver or something. I keep blacks and neutrals, and all my rainbow colors. I way I can just open up the drawer, see what I, just put my hand in there, grab. I don't even have to look at it. All right, but it's past quarter to five. I'm gonna let you guys go. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I love happy mail. Thank you, Jody. I love happy. I'm going to make, if I have enough of that purple fabric, I think, tell me if I'm crazy, but wouldn't this make a fun spool? Do you guys watch Pat Sloan? They're doing, that's why I got the spool pattern because she keeps teasing me with it, right? They have one, a lot of the spools on the quilt that she has hanging behind her are all like flower prints and stuff like that. Quit bragging. <laughs> Quit bragging what? Because I, I watch Pat Sloan. I don't know her. She don't know me. But I thought, wouldn't that be wonderful? Thanks, Heather. Bye, everyone. But what? quick, before you go, what do you think? Can I make spools out of this, right? I think so. But thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. I will see you guys with it Wednesday. Bye, see my patrons on Sunday. Donna, if you're still here and you need any help, just email me.